Hey folks, it's Andrew here. I am now on day 38 of recovery post-surgery. Uh, so I, I suppose this is week 5. I'm about to come up on completing week 6. And I am now down to one crutch. I can put 75% of weight on my operated side, on my left side. Move around pretty easily. That's good. The uh, recovery has gone pretty well so far. It has been surprisingly linear. I've been going to physical therapy twice a week. I had my two-week post-surgery review with the surgeon who said that everything looked good, looked like it was healing up. Uh, the only real difficulty that I had was that the incision areas had gotten infected and I had to go on some antibiotics and that delayed me getting back into swing. But I can now get back in the pool. I cannot swim yet, but I can do water walking. I've been able to return to the gym and do upper body strength. And I'm about, I have completed this first phase of physical therapy. Next week we're going to be starting some more load-bearing type things. So, all in all, going pretty well. No real complaints. Uh, a couple of days where I didn't feel so well, but that is, that is to be expected. I can move around pretty easily. Uh, that's, that's going well. I'm about to re retire the walker and a few other things, so we are moving along. Uh, as I have, I have been members of the various Facebook support groups for people who are considering the surgery, one of the common questions that gets asked is, what kind of stuff am I going to need to have my house prepared? And especially for someone like me, I'm single and I live alone. I got plenty of people who live nearby, friends and family members who can come over and help me, but I wanted to make sure that my house was all set up and ready to go so that I could be as independent as possible. So I figured for this video, I would go through the, the, the need-to-haves and the nice-to-haves so that those of you who are considering a surgery can be prepared. Let's have a look. So first things first, you are going to need your mobility devices, either a walker or a set of crutches. That's the one crutch in the corner that I'm not using right now, or both. Most likely you will be issued one, one or the other of these through your, through your surgery center. I would definitely recommend inquiring ahead of time as to which one you will be given or if you will be given an option. I made use of both pretty well. The walker I used extensively for the first couple of weeks. The crutches I only used to get up and down the stairs and to get through narrow doorways. But then as I was allowed to put more weight back on the operating side, I stopped using the walker so much and use the crutches instead. So I would recommend getting both if you can. So walker and crutches. You are going to need in your sleeping area some tables, some stuff on either side. Uh, if your bedroom is set up as, in as well as it can, that's great. I actually moved one of my spare beds to my downstairs so that I would not have to uh, navigate the stairs for the first couple of days. Whichever you do, make sure that you have at least a couple of bedside tables. And if you can get something like this, like this little cheap set of drawers, I put clothes and things in there. I found that to be pretty handy as well. As far as the tools that you should consider getting, you definitely want to get this grabber tool. This is a reach extender. Bear in mind that you are not going to be able to flex your hip a whole lot, at least for the first few days, maybe the first couple of weeks. So if you drop something or need to reach, up, reach down and grab something, this grabber tool is very handy. I use this an awful, awful lot. So a grabber tool. Get one of those. You are going to want to get a some kind of water bottle with either carrying handle and a lid. Uh, this one is one that I already had. This is a running uh, uh, hands-free jogging water bottle. I actually got a lot of use out of this. I uh, left my hands free for drinking and also for carrying stuff and forth back, back and forth from the kitchen. You will want to get some packs of some kind. I've got uh, a fanny pack here or a bum bag as some of the parts called in parts of the world. Again, very useful for carrying things around and carrying them back and forth. In when you want when you're going to need to carry a little bit heavier stuff or bulkier things, a backpack is useful. I, again, I already had this one, but I used it a lot. This is the good old Iron Man backpack, using for things like carrying around clothes when I need to transport them around or some other stuff. You will want to consider getting some kind of attachment for whatever, uh, either the walker or the crutch that you're using. This right here, a friend sent me, and this is just a you know, for lack of a better term, a, a walker pouch. I use this a lot. Put my glasses and my phone in here, and it, it hooks on there with a Velcro. Very handy. And I actually ended up using the backpack a lot less than I thought I would when the, my good friend gave this to me as a present. You can also get order on it off of Amazon or other medical supply companies. You can get similar type things for the crutches. I didn't get one for the crutches just because I had my, my fanny pack that I used, but that is definitely something to consider. You will also wants to get one of these. This is a leg lift device. 
I actually got this as part of a kit for some other things that I ordered. Didn't think that I would use it at all. Oh boy, first week, week and a half, I used this a lot. In fact, I used this leg lift in conjunction with this bed grip device here, or the bed, I, I don't even know what you call this thing, a bed handle. Uh, you want to make sure that you have either one of these or something something that you can grab onto, something sturdy for getting in and out of the bed. And I use these two in conjunction with each other to get my get uh, lift up my surgical side when getting into bed and when moving myself around. After about the first 10 days, I really didn't need either one of these as much anymore. But for the first week and a half, both of these, both the, the bed handle here and the grip and the leg lift were very, very handy. And other things. Ricola. Oh, man. If you are put under anesthesia, you are going to be intubated. You will have a sore throat when you come out of surgery. I actually asked my brother to stop by the store and get some of those. And I've ended up getting them daily, three or four times a day for the first couple of weeks. And they did me a lot of good. You would want to get some appropriate surgery clothing. It is easy to get on and off, especially if you're single and live alone. These that I got, again, off of Amazon, where you get everything, are snap-on and snap-off pants. They don't have a typical zipper and button, but rather they snap on and off down the side so that you can take the pants on and off without having to bend over. I heard other people talk about needing assistance getting dressed and getting in and out of the shower. Because I had stuff like this, I really didn't need that assistance all that much. Again, after about the first 10 days, I didn't need these anymore, but you should consider them. And for clothing, you're definitely going to want to get some kind of open-toed shoe. I like using the Crocs because they're nice and sturdy. And they use these mostly for going, uh, for you know, getting around the house or when I had to go outside. You can slide these on and off uh, without uh, without wearing socks. If you live in a colder environment, you're of course going to need to wear socks, and maybe these aren't so good. But Crocs or some kind of open-toed sandal or shoe that you can get on and off easily is highly recommended. Uh, for around the house, I also use these. These are Ufos. Again, in conjunction with a uh, big shoehorn. If you're going to have a shoe type of this that, uh, that you're going to need to slide on and off, you're going to need a shoehorn like this. These are softer tops, so they're more appropriate for inside than outside. And, but they still feel nice and good on your feet, especially when you've been moving around a little bit and your feet are a little tired and sore. All right. So as for things that I did not use so much that you know, I'd gotten uh, on other people's recommendation that you may still want to consider, Gatorade. Electrolytes to have near your bed for when you get back from surgery, depending on how the anesthesia makes you feel. I, I bought a bunch of these and I didn't drink any of them. I just didn't want them. Uh, your experience may vary, but you definitely want to consider having some kind of electrolyte or fluid uh, near your bed in case the anesthesia medication impacts you in a manner that's that uh, is not incredibly pleasant and again urinal this is a male urinal obviously if you're female you want to get a female one i use this a few times not a whole lot it, this is all going to depend on your your mobility in the first couple of days my i was fairly mobile other people have different types of experiences and this device here this was a this is a tool bib. I didn't use this at all, just because other people were nice nice enough to give me bags. But again, something to consider where you have a place to put like a phone and glasses. It's not like I'm not going to get use out of this when I can get back into working in my tool shed again. That'll be handy. And for that there. And for my physical therapy, I think I've shown this in a little video before. This is a, this is a under the desk type uh, stationary bike. I got use out of this for probably the first month or so. Now, you, would, you should talk to your surgeon and your physical therapist ahead of time to see if they're going to have you on a stationary bike. This thing costs about 35 bucks, so it's not all that expensive, and it's nice, good, and good to use for getting the hip all nice and loose. In your washroom, you definitely want to get a raised toilet seat. Again, I only really needed this for about a week and a half, but man oh man was I glad that I had it. As you can see, it's uh, this fits over top of your regular toilet seat. You just take your toilet seat off, flip it back in there, 
and it's got these nice steady, sturdy handles that you can use to get up and down. Um, I didn't have too much difficulty getting on and off of the toilet, but I've heard other people say that they had considerable difficulty, even to the point of when having one of these raised toilet seats, they still needed a little bit of help. This thing made all the difference in the world, though. Again, this is all about making things as easy on yourself as possible, so you definitely want to get one of these. And the essentials for your shower or bathtub. You will want to get a shower chair because you're not going to be able to stand up and down. You will not be able to take a shower standing. I have a walk-in shower here. Your, your, your available items may vary. Maybe you have a bathtub. Maybe you have a different kind of shower. And I had to navigate over this little step right here. But you definitely want a shower chair because you cannot be laying down in a tub. You will not be able to submerge the surgical area in in water. You you will, however, be able to take a shower after a couple of days, and you're going to you're going to need to be seated. So you will need a shower chair. You are going to need some safety bars for getting in and out of your bathing area. Now this one, this L shape from back here was already there. This one right here, I bought and installed. If you if you need to install some safety handles, the rule of thumb is to have one for every wall. Uh, this the shower obviously has three walls. I did not put one over there on this other side because we got that little shelf right there. But you, I, I needed at least two. That one was obviously not going to be adequate because the way I would get into the shower was pull the shower chair up, sit down on it, and then put my raise my right foot, my non-operated side, up over that little lip and stand back up. And then push the shower chair back a little bit and then sit back down again and I needed that support the whole time. If you have to install one of these, bear in mind that you cannot drill into tile using a standard drill bit. You either need to get a diamond tip drill bit or a carbide tip drill bit. And it takes a good amount of time to drill these holes. I had to drill four holes for this and it took about 20 minutes a piece just because it takes a lot of time to drill through that tile. You are also going to want to get a long handled bath brush so that you can wash things like legs and feet that you can't bend over far enough to reach. Uh, you will want to consider getting a, a, well the brand name for these is Shower Massager. That's uh, what we call them in the 80s. I don't know what you much call these these days. One of these, I got it, installed it, and it has worked out pretty darn well. And I also ended up getting the, my the Old Spice body wash there instead of using bar soap. I had tried to use bar soap the first day and that was just a little more difficult because it was one more thing to have to handle. And finally, one thing that I forgot earlier. If you are a coffee or a tea drinker, you definitely want to get a Yeti mug or something, you know, a hot, a hot mug with a spill-proof lid. I drink a lot of coffee, so I use this a ton. But there you have it, folks. Those are the items that I found to be essential in getting through the first few weeks of recovery from hip arthroscopy. So I hope you found this information useful. We'll see you again soon.